we're going to give you the best way to get more sales and it's not some big huge secret or some trick method that's going to do it hey it's Don. today we're going to talk about sales getting more sales I get dozens and dozens of messages, emails, posts, and things right this very second, pretty much every day, saying how everybody's sales are tanking. I hear it constantly, day in and day out. And this also happens to those who have been on for a long time, as well as those new folks just hopping on to start reselling for the first time. Now, a lot of times it may come down to your items, what you have listed. Number one thing you can do to make sure you're going to get sales is to only list good items. And that comes down to researching them. The prices are there for you to dig into. You can find the prices of what items sold for on a specific site like eBay through Terapeak very easily. You can see every item that sold in the last year on the platform and what it sold for. So there's no real reason why you can't track down the price. The biggest thing, though, I can tell you that's always, always, always got a sales, no matter what I'm doing, is list more items. That's it. That's all you got to do is keep adding items to your inventory. There's no excuse to say don't list a bunch of items these days. It doesn't cost you a single dime extra, depending on the level of store that you have on eBay. I know in the past I used to hear people saying if you list every day, you're going to run yourself out of business. Now, that never made sense back then. It makes far less sense right now. So if somebody's telling you you shouldn't be listing to get more sales, they're not up on how this all works. If you're listing one-offs or oddball things, the only way they're going to sell is if the right person's on. So if you've only got a handful of them there that you're listing at a time, you don't have enough quantity to garner a constant flow of sales. It's not just about quantity, though, as I said in the beginning. If you don't have good items, they're not going to sell. You could have a million items up, but if they're all garbage, it doesn't mean a solitary thing. Now, every item I have, and we've got well over a million dollars in inventory listed on eBay, 30,000 things just on the store I share, and that doesn't garner you any guarantees. But with the items that I have up, every one of those items, I have researched the price. I know that those items all have a potential to sell. I'm not just throwing something up in the hopes to get five bucks out of something. We also have a threshold of how low we will go to list an item. I don't list anything unless it's at least $9.99 or higher in most categories. Some categories it has to be at least $19.99 for me to even want to throw it up like a 78 record only because of, say, the time it'll take to pack it. You've got to leverage all of that in. The $9.99 items will take me like 10 seconds to pack. There's nothing to packing those sorts of items. So it's super, super easy without any extra hassle for them. So for us, if I want to make extra money, anytime I want to make extra money, I'll throw in a couple hours with a bunch of people listing and we will get some more items up and then boom, more sales will come in immediately. Again, they're good items. I'm not just throwing up something that doesn't have a potential to sell. I'm not throwing up something that there's a million of them on eBay priced cheaper than mine. I'm throwing up more unique, at least in category wise, than what most people would. So I've got to leverage in those categories. Now, let's say I'm listing 40, 45 items an hour, which is what we average in some categories, like paper. I can list 45 postcards within an hour by myself without any problem. I got videos up here showing me do that. So it's not something that's a fantasy. If I'm listing that, I spend two and a half hours and I get, say, 100 items up. Chances are, before I've even finished that 100 items, getting them all up, I've sold one of those. That's usually what happens. And again, my profits are 3x what most people else would get for some of the similar items that we sell. Again, it comes down to keyword, comes down to photo, it comes down to your expertise in those items that you are selling most people would go to someone who knows what they're talking about in a specific category and buy from them over somebody who is clueless on many of the items that they are selling it's it's just a fact of nature if I want to buy something very specific I want to know that the people I'm buying it from understand what it is they've correctly identified it they've correctly you know described it they've listed anything that could be wrong materials and all that sort of thing these all play factors into your business of course 
Now, there's a lot of people out there that are constantly sourcing. That's what they do half their day, and they have a ton of inventory sitting there in back stock that they aren't listing. They keep constantly driving around trying to find new merchandise. If you're not getting sales and all you're doing is driving around and only listing so many items a day, you're, you're not focusing on what's important if you want those sales. If you list those items you have in back stock, you're going to start to sell some of those items. So if you're not having the sales and you've got a bunch of stuff sitting there that you haven't listed, what are you waiting for? That's what's going to help you get more sales. The more items you have up, again, there's no extra fees depending on your store level. And even at the store level prices, it's not that much compared to how it used to be. It's fairly cheap to get the exposure for the listing itself these days on eBay. I can get 75,000 listings with an anchor store for less than $300 total in for the fees for listing any of those items. 75,000 items is millions of dollars worth of inventory. And if even you've got a couple percentages of those selling on a weekly basis, you're making some pretty good money. But again, you've got to keep feeding the machine. You've got to keep listing new items. I've clearly noticed if I don't list every single day or at least a good chunk of every day, I'm not going to get as many sales, obviously because there's not new merchandise up. But on top of that, when you list new items, you get watchers on those and you get the opportunity to send offers to watchers. Many times they're not just looking at the item you just listed either. They're looking at other items that are recommended by eBay that you also have in your store related to the item they're looking at. That's part of the reason why I love niches so much because I can list in a niche and if I list something new, it draws them to that whole category category in my store. Many times I can sell multiple items to a person who just noticed something I just listed. That's getting them into your store. That's very hard to do for many people these days. Wrong keywords, your title is just horrid. If you've got stuff in the wrong spot, misidentification, your photo is shot from so far back you can't see what you're selling. All of these reasons can kill your sales. Regardless of what anybody else says, when I list more, I always sell more. Even if my sales are doing good, I want to push them up. I want to get some more money in. I want to buy a new car. Whatever I want to do, all I got to do is throw some more items up. And again, I've got so much back stock, I can do that any day I want. So if you're sitting on a whole bunch of inventory that you haven't listed and your sales are down, start listing that inventory. Don't go constantly out buying new merchandise until you list what you already have. You may have made some bad investments. You may be losing. You may not understand certain categories and think you do. There's all sorts of reasons. You want to see some results before you keep investing in the same thing that may not give you a return. Your ROI, return on your investment, has to be worth your time. It goes right along with the resellers who say they don't make any money because of eBay's fees. If you are not making money because of the fees on eBay, you are not selling the right items or not pricing them correctly at all. If there's no money to be made, I'm not going to sell that item. We run three, four, five hundred percent profits on pretty much 99% of everything I list. We're very specific on what we list as well. I'm not listing garbage. I'm not listing something that everybody has. These are all reasons why sales can come in for one person and not for a bunch of others. You've got to learn from your mistakes. And if you're not listing those to figure it out, what's going on with the pricing, you're not researching, you're not getting up, but you're still buying, that's what's going to kill a business. Active stores get a lot more views, a lot more action going on than stores that don't list all the time. It's just factual. Even if you don't sell some of those items, you just listed it attracts people to your store. And the hopes are you can at least get some new watchers. If you're listing junk, as I said, though, a million times in this video, it's not going to help you at all. Far too many people say my sales are dead. I look at their store and a lot of the items they have up are just not worth listing. Or they should have been bunched together, say, in a lot instead of trying to one off them. There's a lot of things that just aren't worth listing. I would never list something that would only sell for five bucks. If I list something originally for 14 and it turns out only being worth five or I was off, that's a different story. But I would never attempt to list something under that price because, again, you do have the fact of the fees and shipping and your time. 
your time, the investment of your time into a $5 item may be the biggest waste of all. You could just throw away the item, not list it, and save money in many cases, especially with things I've seen people list that carry little to no value. And these are just basics to get you sales in, no matter what time of year it is. If you're selling the right thing, the season, the day of the year, the day of the week means absolutely nothing. I promise you that's the case. It just depends on what you're selling, what categories, what items you are selling. I try to stick to ones that it doesn't matter what season it is, intentionally. I used to do the clothing. I used to do the books. I used to do garage sales and, and get video games and whatever else I could find. But those are, are hit or miss. Those sometimes aren't as attractive to sell on certain times of the year. Video games in general, if people can go outside, less video games are going to sell. So in the summertime, they don't sell as much. So that adds sometimes to the summer drop-off that many people have, that many people experience. Now, we don't have that drop-off like many other people do. Right this second, right now, this month right here, we just started August, we've been rolling in the same numbers we do in fourth quarter straight through. Again, collectors collect. I'm listing good items. I'm listing them constantly. Every day there's action going on. I respond to everybody's email. I send out offers to watchers constantly, all day long if that's what it takes. If I'm down working or somebody else is working, they check those constantly, like almost every hour. If you check them all the time, pretty much every time someone checks them, there's two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen new ones. Again, we're listing as well. It's drawing the folks into our store. If you're not putting new stuff up, you're not getting pushed in front of potential buyers you're missing out. You're not going to even get them into your store. You want them not just to see the one single item that they happen to come across through a search. You want them to come into your listing and click on your store to see your whole group of items. You've got to have good items to do that. You've got to have a draw for them to want to come into your store. That's why zoom-ins and big popping good close-up detailed images do so well because it draws attention to it over and above what other people have up, even if it's just the exact same thing. That all comes down again to having good items that you're listing constantly with good photos, good titles, good keywords, good information, and good understanding of what the item is you are selling. Having 10,000 items up or 30,000 items up like we have in the store we share means nothing if they're junk. End of story. Just list constantly good items and your sales will go up. It's a no-brainer. That's how it works. There's no secret. There's no trick. You don't need to get a course from me or anything else like that to know that. You list new items, you'll get more sales. I'll leave it at that. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.